And okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sheila, uh, for taking uh, the summary of the yesterday. So, uh, you guys have my screen now? It's a screen. I don't know. Yes, now we have. Okay, you should have the PowerPoint. Yes. Okay, how can I see what's going on? Okay, you still have it, right? Yes, we have. Okay, great. So today uh, we're going to have an introduction uh, about uh, the history behind this workshop because it's highly important um, to us to find new talents, as I mentioned yesterday. And you guys need to uh, catch everything on from the very first beginning. We got into this idea of having functional paradigms uh where we got it and how we are using it and where we are heading to so in that case you can find your position for future collaborations uh, and of course uh you're gonna find yourself in the middle of the you know a uh, bunch of data streams uh because you probably have different uh skill sets from one to another uh and this project uh, needs to you know, be presented in, in in some case of some case of a stage that everyone can actually feel he uh, um, herself or himself where you are uh, uh, find your own mind get weaved into the stream of thought that we are you know delivering at this workshop. What is functional paradigms uh, and uh, how we are going to apply it when it comes to working with different data is the main question behind my presentation today. And please note any question you had uh, down so you can ask after this uh, kind of lecture. I'm gonna start with a bit of background and then we're going to check out how our uh, history got us to this position to have this you know, performance structures, working with force flows, what working with environmental analysis, uh, and working with geometry, uh, which by the way can take on, you know, managing the force flows. So um, we can actually rely on those functions based on different factors and different parameters. And uh, at the end of this lecture, I'm going to represent one of our projects or two of our projects so we can find out this team has this experience uh, to present something to you from A to Z. A is related to much more of a research project attitudes, and Z is related to real, you know, problem solving. Um, okay, Arden has two wings. Uh, one is Pro, which uh, comprises design, engineering, and fabrication. Each has, or better say, include uh, some of our team members. The uh, other wing is related to research and uh, development, which is dedicated to learning, teaching, and research. So maybe by having this idea in your mind that, all right, these guys uh, cover so many things, and I can find myself uh, in one of the uh, stream of works and one of the research projects. What we do is related to functional design. Any we, we develop algorithms, uh, and we use these algorithms through uh, upgrading current knowledge in design, engineering, and construction. No matter what, we try to inject those algorithms to cover cost and time uh, in an optimized version. So uh, when it comes to research projects. The simulation and optimization part gets, you know, in a higher stage because we're trying to make a prototype. We're trying to, for instance, uh, get into another level uh, when it comes to use something in industry. And in actual works, however, we go through, you know, engineering the design process, like uh, something that is missing in 
every project which is related to architects, which by the way, I, uh, I assume so many of our participants are from architecture fields, and uh, between architects and contractors, we engineer the design uh, into something much more reliable related to the building industry assets or something like that. So this is uh, how we do in, in general, but let's go through the first thing, which is related to R&D style and check out the projects that, that are running. And if you find any of these instances or examples I'm going to represent, just write it down so you can ask a particular question about them. And if you found yourself really interested in some of them, just let me know. Before going through the individual projects, I would like to talk a little bit about functional paradigms. Functional paradigms is something related to making parameters integrated and working together. For instance, just assume we have an element in architecture. We want to have this really working with environments. We want to have this working with the uh, fabrication procedures, uh, which, by the way, currently like the design of our fabrication. And we want that a specific element uh, based on aesthetic styles. You know, it should be eye-catching. It should be related to uh, even a structural attribute. So, so many factors in just designing a one a specific element in uh, architecture. Uh, if I want to make an example here, just think about a facade. Uh, facade is a limit between interior and exterior. There are so many things in a facade element that we need to consider. All of those factors I uh, mentioned earlier are related to designing a performative facade. So if I want to make those parameters integrated towards a specific function, or better to say towards a specific qualification, I need to make a paradigm between the parameters that are uh, going to impact the performance. This is you know, obvious. And you can actually find about this diagram or better say a graph here. These are the things we as architects and designer, unfortunately, we have to deal with all of them in this world, like mechanical properties, machine learning, physics, simulation, coding, aesthetic style, support position. Where, where can I uh, achieve a minimum amount of material when I design something? So there are so many factors. So uh, that doesn't mean everyone should know about all of them, but everyone should know about them in general to work in a team. Uh, so when we call functional paradigms, this relates to a bunch of endeavors to make a better connectivity between parameters from different factors. That is you know, something that I would like to uh, always mention when people ask me about what is functional paradigm, you're telling us a lot. And in that case, if we use algorithms, if we use programming languages or coding to make this kind of integration much more smarter, or better to say, uh, in a better kind of you know qualification, because the, fu the functions are coming from different factors, and each of them has many, many parameters, we need to uh, use those specific or high qualified algorithms. And if we use them, we have the integration process or integrated design uh, in a paradigm. So by the end of you know, this statement, you can find out, all right, there was a problem. It was a complex one. If I wanted to you know, have a specific element, really performative, I have to take care of all of those parameters, but I can apply that integrating procedures based on the algorithms. And if I do that, uh, you you actually find yourself at a stage to apply machine learning. You find yourself at a stage as an architect to use AI uh, to you know ask AI or better say write something based on AI to do these kind of things for you. Uh, this is the case we are trying to represent in all of those you know aspects and our endeavors at Ardena. Uh, so I'm going to uh, go further with some examples. And I, from this moment, everything I represent is related to this workshop we're going to have with you guys. So uh, first thing first, we wanted to use geometry. Why? Because 
some parts of our project related to traditional architecture. And I'm talking about 7,000 years of experiences that's been missing. And we forgot this. Uh, and we have a rich, uh, in, we have a rich, you know, um, level of that and when it comes to you know civilized nations like iranian architecture or uh rome or or any kind of uh nations that has this kind of richness in their endeavors uh this is one example we're going to use uh within the applying geometry applying gure geometry gure is related to traditional uh, geometries that we got from Iranian architecture, and we're going to use that. Why? Because of this image. This image shows how those geometries, which, by the way, are really beautiful, and they taken out from nature, uh, but it is limited to their on-time technology, okay? This image represents something that we can, or we better go into uh, study these kind of endeavors from the past, and for the future, you can see there is a P force from above that is going to be applied on uh, a dome. The image represents a dome in the Iranian architecture. You can find it, uh, and our Iranian friends find it on, on the Gombad, we call it, we call it a, a traditional dome. And you can find that it, it actually includes uh, so many. Uh, geometries under it uh, that carry out the, all those weights, okay? When P comes out uh, to represent a force, it are going to distribute it through these geometries and each of them would go through, make the force neutral in just Fx on, or uh, Fy. Uh, why they do that, why, why, why I actually recall this, because you can see when it comes to, you know, uh, distributed force in this directions, there is one side, one, you know, uh, like something with, I would say, not a column, but a side of the arc here that carries out some, some forces, some force resources, and there is another one. When you can... Uh, imagine these two are at the same spot uh they're gonna make the f uh, fx neutral because there is one from other side and the other and they're gonna face each other so there's gonna be just fy uh at a, you know the accumulative uh force flows so by this uh kind of paradigm of controlling the force flows we can apply the same scenario but not limited in the uh, you know ancient times technology. We can use different material. We can apply the same procedures by uh, different approaches using uh, much more reliable material, or better say, much more performative uh, geometry. But we need to find out how. This is the big question we had when we started to study Iranian traditional architecture, and we're going to apply some of these geometries on our free form structures during the workshop. So keep that in mind uh, when it comes to functions and it is related to geometry, these kind of stuff that is timeless and placeless, we can learn and write architecture through them. And there are tons of functions like this. So we need to figure out and find out based on you know, the analysis we can uh, run at, uh, these days or based on the simulation accuracy that we have at the moment. So this is just the, you know, sneak peek through how we are going to apply the geometry based on functional paradigms. Okay, this is uh, one of my favorite slides, which represents our team or uh, team members. They are, you know, distributed in different categories uh, based on skill set some of them are really good at natural growth patterns some of them are really great with ai and machine learning and uh, or uh, other stuff but uh, all of these kind of endeavors are converged into functional paradigms we're going to find how these functions are working whether it's related to geometry environment environmental analysis or the structure. And my own major is related to the structure part. The rest is from these guys. 
Okay. Uh, from now on, I'm going to represent some of the main instances so you can feel what this guy is talking about. Uh, this project is related to a free form structure, elemental, uh, better say, like uh, a space structure based on different elements and a node that um, you know holds the elements together. Okay. Now think about it. If, if we can have those force flows coming together in just one node, which I'm going to represent in another project so you can feel it and uh, more, more, you know, uh, palpable. But think about this. When it comes to different force flows into one node, if I track the force flows, I can eliminate those part of the node that doesn't even, you know, uh, have any role in uh, managing those force flows. This is uh, a node here. You can uh, check out the distribution of loads inside it. And based on new technologies like 3D printing, uh, with different you know approaches, we can have this node. So so much material waste can be controlled. This is you know uh, related to something that we are working on at the moment. The next project is related to developing a genetic algorithm optimization procedure based on Python. Where we use this for uh, you know educating people about uh, different heuristic algorithms. It's just an open source that we're trying to present here, but uh, we are going to publish it in, uh, pretty soon. But uh, this is one of another projects that we are trying to have the genetic algorithm controllable and as an open access procedure in some components. So we can, uh, you know, work with different attributes I'm not gonna you know, dive in what is genetic algorithm how it works but uh, this is you know going to help us uh, to manage our procedure of optimization based on what we need uh, and based on that i always mention we need so many other stuff to be open source so other researchers can actually work on and we need uh work for those as well these two are the you know main backbone of our research developing workflows and developing open source uh, options for everybody. So you can find out uh, developing a workflow kind of style in this workshop, which uh, we represented the Future 2021. It was totally related to geometry, nothing else. And you can find out uh, some parts of my speech about having different factors, traditional techniques, fabrication, features, characters of any element, a specific system, which can actually be defined under the functional paradigms, actions and reaction of a structural elements and other stuff. And you can see the future material sustainability is under the future section. And now it's the future. We have this <laughs> workshop with you guys uh, and the environmental analysis and bio-inspired uh, kind of attitude had has been added to the procedure. This is like uh, from the past two years ago, and now we are uh, going to represent the outputs with you guys, and we actually expect uh, a better contribution from this cohort. So uh, by following the same idea, we have started to develop other, you know, projects related to that one. This one was related to Iranian traditional architecture. And the next, uh, at the next step, we applied uh, natural patterns. Uh, we developed something based on Python uh, to process images. And in this workshop, a uh, participant can actually uh, could apply those uh, images from nature. They should select them wisely and apply them via the Python code uh, into a free form structure. You can actually see them here. And the same diagram, but it's updated, much more minimal uh, from the last one. And we added the elliticism. This is related to how uh, we select an iteration through tons of iterations when it comes to different design uh, features and design you know, approaches. Uh, and we want to select something based on the features we want, uh, for instance. Uh, a designer wants to uh, have 
his or her design uh, to be more organic, uh, no matter what material they're going to use or how much material is going to waste. Uh, but the other is uh, going to, you know, have the same process, the same design process with uh, much more optimized material waste control. And uh, the shape is not important. These are different features, uh, different approaches through the design process. And based on different projects, we need to sort out those features. So if they want to do that, this algorithm, this uh, Python code, give them the idea of having the same procedure as they want. And we developed this uh, with uh, adding some sort of intelligency from nature. Okay, the question is, uh, Michael asked us about how you are going to apply the nature intelligence to your design process. The big question is, uh, how are the ways, or better say, uh, in what kind of ways we can uh, ask nature to give us some ideas uh, when it comes to design and structure. In this workshop, which is related to the uh, 22, yeah, 2022 digital futures, we called it Learning X. Uh, we ask nature by L system. You can find these kind of codes here. They are representing uh, different formats, different grammar of nature. You can find them by searching what is L system. It's really easy not to, you know, don't want to make this hard to follow. Uh, and you're going to find that there are some grammars based on the recent research that we can apply. For instance, in this uh, uh, workshop, uh, you can apply those systems uh, based on how tree uh, and how plants grow. Uh, in this case, we used L system to generate different iterations uh, for uh, st structural branching, but based on what nature does. And uh, right now, imagine we have different grammars on the table, and we're, we, we're going to pick just one of them, but it should be related to our preform structure. That is the case that we tried to apply through the workshop. And there were so many data recording. And uh, after a while, we actually applied machine learning to figure out the, the uh, uh, feature-based design that we really wanted uh, with different features, you know, to think about the material and different kind of uh, options we can have through a design procedure. Uh, it, uh, at this one, we find that, okay, uh, now we can go further. And if our approach were static to use different grammars, we could have used the uh, natural intelligence uh, with different approaches. And we found out uh, that, okay, we may have this kind of intelligent procedures uh, that we can get from nature by developing something related to Pfizerium. And uh, this is the one that I'm talking about. I'm gonna get back to you know previous slide after the, after a while. But uh, you can find out that having Pfizerium as something that can follow uh, the food on a free form structure is really you know reliable. Why uh, am I saying that? Because you can see that the, when we define the food, uh, based on the uh, maximum tensions and maximum compressions that we got through the uh, structure analysis, Pyzerium followed the force flows. And in that case, uh, we could find out, okay, we have a structure based on the Pyzerium uh, algorithm, or better say simulation algorithm, uh, that follows the force flow. If uh, we eliminate the other parts, uh, we got ourselves a structure based on those force flows, which we totally are, you know, uh, confident that okay, this iteration Pycerium gave us uh, is you know, reliable because it it is related to those force flows. So this is another uh, section of what we're going to uh, experience in the upcoming days, uh, and I need to you know, check back a little bit to talk about it.
uh, in this project, we had the same process, but uh, we try to apply different images from nature, as I mentioned, but there is a difference between this project and the last one I told you about. Uh, I'm going to represent uh, how we can use machine learning algorithm through this one uh, at the later sessions. Uh, so they can actually let us know. I think the, the last session or yes, last day of the it's workshop. Last session. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're going through this project. I'm going to represent uh, as a sneak peek today uh, how it works. But uh, think about it. The different sections I represented, like having a structure of free form, which has its own, you know, attributes to need to consider. It has a framework we need to know about how free form structure works and everything. And then we're going to follow the process based on different approaches. We are going to use geometry based on you know, the notion I uh, mentioned earlier, like uh, geometry, uh, which helps us. And then we're going to use or ask the different Pisarium. I hate that expression, sorry. Uh, somebody made something some, uh, as a joke coming and uh, hey, you dear friend, you're ruining our life. And it actually got in my mind. Okay, we're going to use the dear friend kind of style, uh, Pisarium to be applied on our free form structure within this section. And uh, the last part uh, is having a designing procedure on one specific module uh, geometry that we applied earlier. Uh, don't worry about the, if you find it too much or hesitated. Uh, we're going to, you know, encode every little part. And we have different lectures by our team here about Quasarium, about, you know, structural preforms, about the environment procedure, how we can apply those, you know, for instance, solar incidents on a uh, preform structure or something. And uh, don't worry at, at all, but uh, by weaving those sections at the end of the workshop all together in just one specific algorithm, you can actually define an integrated process cross-platform and of course, totally you know, related to every little factors uh, that we can have the recording part for machine learning part, which is not gonna be, you know, uh, how this uh, agenda that we have, but we are really open to further development and we're going to, you know, define a um, um, solid connection with you guys after the workshop to have your ideas. And I'm, I'm going to represent at the end of the workshop, how we're going to ask you to contribute to this project. Okay, so uh, it's GH time. Let me represent something to you. Uh, and over this direct talk uh, so we can feel what I'm talking about. Or I need to change my screen. So maybe I will ask you to have uh, 13 more minutes if, yeah, if it is fine with you. Right now? After, yeah, half an hour you have, and then after half an hour, uh, we can go for a quick break and then return in 15 minutes. Okay, if you want to run it, that's fine. Okay, do you have my screen? No, not yet. Okay, let me just try it again. Yeah, I should just... Uh... <clears throat> okay, you should have it by now. Yes, we have. All right, great. So, uh, 
let me show you what we are going to represent first. Uh, this is a random freeform structure. I'm not gonna go through you know those architectural attributes. You can have your own in any way. And this is uh, a natural mesh on it, but how we applied it is the case. And uh, let me just open this. It's one more finished. Where is it? Hmm. Now these two. All right, and uh, we post processes based on the, uh, you can see the tensions here. So uh, it's gonna be the same procedure within this workshop, but with a much more, you know, advanced approaches. Uh, this uh, is how we use natural patterns related to the freeform structure based on image processing. And uh, we uh, analyze it through Karimba and recorded the data with different iteration through different images. Uh, let me show you uh, what images I'm talking about. Published <clears throat> by the data. Okay. Uh, think about these. These guys that are from different patterns in nature. Okay, this is the uh, procedure we had earlier, and we applied each of them on free, on the free form structure and asked Karimba which one is the best for this design that we have. Okay, and we recorded all of the data. Let me open the Excel file so you can find out how many iterations we had there. Iter for images uh, we should have somewhere. Uh, biodata rec yeah we record this through the entire uh algorithm we had 2439 uh iterations and each of them has different attributes like the displacement of the structure under the low case the elastic energy the mass in kilogram the uh, element diameter of our, you know, uh, space structure, the element thickness, and the gene code. What is the gene code? Gene code shows us uh, the exact image that the algorithm used uh, for the uh, generative procedure of the structure. For instance, number nine is related to, um, I don't know, the uh, soil cracks, for instance, or number four is related to uh, the leaf uh, patterns of distributing uh, the you know elements on it. So uh, this is not a solid research. Uh, it's just a showcase where we're going to experience uh, the more reliable one, the more reliable version through the workshop. And how it works is going to be like this. Let me just check out them. Going to Grasshopper. Okay, we developed this workflow that I'm representing at the moment. It's really simple. It has three different sections. Section one reads the images. Uh, section two is the Karimba. And section three is manipulating our uh, number sliders via Python. I'm going to represent this to you. But remember, uh, I'm not going to go through the uh, details at the moment. Just if you found it interesting, don't worry. Uh, we're going to have the same experience at the last day. So if I find this, it is for images. It reads the images based on the, you can see it's being loaded based on the RGB codes on every pixel of our images. And uh, yeah, I'm going to load the bio data rec. This is nothing, uh, just, you know, started to check out what parameters has been recorded. And the other is iters for recalling. 
All right, now I can hack the number of sliders based on this code here. Let me just show you how it works. It changes the name of the number of slider related to our structure and if with different iterations. And it, it's uh, nothing particular, but based on two or three different definitions here, we can have the process that we wanted in our mind. Uh, this is the place that everyone asked me, okay, if uh, something, could be automated, where is going to be the design designer position? This is the place. And that is why I always recommend architects and designer to go for coding because you can you know, have your own tools. That, that's the you know, particular part of it. Okay, uh, now with changing this uh, slider, I can update my number slider that were uh, related to every iteration, for instance. You can see when I change this one, which recalls a different iteration, uh, the other, you know, uh, number studies are connected to the main uh, recording part or main data that I got earlier uh, is gonna uh, change too. So let me just uh, check out the IDs here. These, these are related to this specific iteration. I need to check, okay, let's just have, other as well, like uh, mass in kilogram, and you can check these are going to be updated. Uh, okay, we need to be, and of course the uh, elastic in the end. All right, now we have all of the IDs here related to this specific iteration. Let me just change it so we can find this experience. For example, number eight. Now, the ID has been updated and also the uh, structure is being curated based on another natural you know, pattern. Uh, we're gonna have the same process, but with Pfizerium, which is not this much of a mess and it's gonna be really amazing. So um, let me just show you how we process those images in just, you know, yeah, specific look. All right, uh, this uh, notebook is related to using OpenCV to read the images files uh, or better say the attributes based on RGB. Uh, don't worry if you don't get it. Uh, I'm gonna you know, describe every little line here. And of course this one, uh, which is an update through the whole idea we had earlier. Uh, it uses machine learning algorithm uh, to check out the feature that we want. For instance, we have our uh, iterations here and then we're gonna you know, cluster them into different feature-based design approaches. And for instance, let me just show you, these are categorized based on different features and uh, we recall them through the data manipulation via Python uh, to, for, for example, recall this, this little guy here or this one, we can actually control every little part of them. And each cluster has its own features. Like uh, we have uh, more mass here, but less elastic energy. You can see this cluster, the blue one here, uh, and it's rational uh, because, uh, because of the mass, the elastic energy is less. And uh, we can have the, for instance, some cases, some iterations with uh, the uh, less mass, less kilogram, but with more you know, elastic energy. It's based on what we want, okay? Uh, so this is the workflow uh, that is uh, going to do everything for us based on what we had in our mind but with you know, applying different resources. And at this workshop, we're gonna update them uh, with Pfizerium, not by you know, image processing. Uh, why we're going to do that? Because those images, Pfizerium give a, gives us the uh, idea of 
having its own you know case on every iteration so we can find it more, much more you know uh, accessible and convenient uh, since we have the intelligent part of the nature based on what Pyzerium does we can apply this on our preform structure and head it to the structure analysis okay uh, that's that was uh, the first part of the lecture I hope it gave you the idea of what's going to happen during the workshop with different you know resources and uh, let me open the uh, the other range uh, and I always you know insist on representing it because you know this is the pro side of our our, uh, our team here uh, maybe in near future you're gonna you know have this attitude to work with us so uh, after the break, I'm going to talk about uh, about our projects, and that's it. Thank you, Matthew. So I had to just leave the uh, meeting, so I missed the chat. Uh, do you guys have any questions that you want to ask in chat, or just simply um, unmute yourself? And yeah, we can have a couple of questions. And then we can go for a quick break. By the way, Mehdi, you can also continue for a bit of a couple of minutes more, like uh, around 20 minutes. Uh, I don't know. This is not connected to the world after the break. Okay, nice. Okay. So uh Juliana will have a question and uh yeah, we will wait for her also. But yeah, feel free to just write your question in chat or just uh, ask it. So Juliana is asking, how does biomimicry insert the project? So yeah. Uh, okay, that's your expertise. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> so at the end of this session, actually, uh, Ahmed and Behnaz will explain the entire workflow. So we will have, uh, but you know, very short answer is that uh, we will have three uh, clusters. We will have uh, Iranian patterns, Giri, uh, arc, uh, patterns in, from uh, architecture, and then we will have uh, biomimicry, like as you said, uh, and the, the, the case, uh, the cases that, that we are using is Pfizer. And then we will, the third uh, cluster will be the, the basically the, the layout and the modularization of this uh, entire workflow. And definitely all of this will be based of preform structures and uh, structural analysis. So yeah, after this break, uh, we will have the Mehdi's lecture. And then after that, we will continue uh, yeah, deeper in the, the entire workflow, uh, like the agenda, workflow agenda for, uh, sorry, workshop agenda. And then uh, the workflow of each day. Uh, yeah, and also we will have the uh, team, uh, group making, you know, making groups and um, communicating with each other with uh, different links and connections like Discord, like uh, Google Drive and uh, what was it? Yeah, Miro, Miro board. And Zahra is asking at the end, uh, what we are generating and uh, is this a shell or a structure with bio pattern? Mehdi, do you want? Yeah, is this a shell or a structure with bio pattern? Um, it's a structure uh, that has two different layers. Uh, imagine it uh, with two mm, different 
um, element kind, element class. The first class is related to traditional geometry because it works really well when it comes to you know, managing the whole structure. The second stage or the second class uh, are related to how Pfizerian moves on the preform structure and uh, based on different functions. For instance, maybe some of you guys would go through the environmental aspects, like having the main structure based on geom uh, traditional geometries and the second structure, uh, which by the way are related to your freeform uh, you know, iteration, is related to architecture uh, qualification to be added through your design. I mean, some in some case, some groups maybe go for asking Pythereum or defining its food based on environmental you know, features. And in so, uh, some groups would go through asking Pythereum to follow the force flows. It is uh, going to be open to you guys, so you can be creative in that part. Uh, but the two layers uh, would, uh, you know, include the whole process of a free form structure. It's not just having a structure with bio pattern. It's a, it's a design based on those performances, like what we got from the geometry and what we can actually get from nature. The first is related to the first layer. The second is related to the qualification we're going to add, which, you know, the Pfizerium represents for us. We do not know anything, but <laughs> let's just it will go. Yes, thank you. So Mustafa is asking, we will learn how to implement the growth of the Pfizerum structure, but will we be able to implement this workflow in another way, uh, shape or form with other organic structures? The workflow is... Uh... I need the uh, no, reliable and you can, of course, go into the other shapes. This is the you know fun part of our workshop. We, we have no uh, a stated ending and it's open to you guys. And you know, that, that actually is the part I really like because every time we do that, we find our participants much more even creative from the answers that we had earlier in our mind. And uh, this is going to happen anyway. And that is why we ask everyone to work in a group. Uh, because um, for being more creative, you need, for, uh, you need you know, other people with different skills. So think about it and choose wisely and do not go for Mersa. Yeah, I <laughs> you know, uh, described why in the last session. Yes, exactly. Not like, because he's, he's a bad person. He's actually a beast in his own field. You should fight for him. Yeah, so it's like, uh, despite of having some rules in our design workflow, like uh, the, the, the this uh, architectural patterns, which has some specific uh, structural analysis or uh, this uh, bio-integrated uh, design which has the 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 reason basically the logic behind the the natural uh, intelligence. Other than that, there are many parts that you can have your own creativity and uh, even we have many different scenarios here. So we will show some you know a couple of scenarios for you, but it's quite uh, you know open end uh, workflow because you can add and you can uh, upgrade your workflow uh, gradually over time. For example, you can add uh, different aspects of uh, environmental analysis, different aspects of uh, structural analysis, architectural factors, and uh, machine learning factors. You know techniques, and you know it's quite uh, yeah a wide range of uh, experience you can have. It really depends on how you want to uh, integrate with it and how you want to uh, use it in, for your own projects, for your own, uh, you know, the, the, your own um, uh, field of study, basically the focus of your own research. And okay, you, so um, yeah, I think maybe we have a couple of more minutes for questions. But uh, no worries, we can have also questions at the end of the session. Okay, I think everyone is excited about 
replies. Mudra. Mudra is asking, can this technique be used uh, to analyze the growth and decay of a bio uh, synthetic structures? So, um, yes, actually, I think, uh, so this technique is like you're using Biocide, basically the that that cluster, that uh, aspect of your design, but also you will be, um, uh, yeah, you will also uh, see how to integrate these two layers of structure together to have a more reasonable um, output. I think it's better if I can share our, one of our iterations. No worries at all. Because it's totally related to your answer to the latest question. Okay, you have my screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay, this uh, this is one one iteration, one specific iteration related to uh, what we're trying to say. You can see the, the there is a preform structure here. It's manually developed, but you can have uh, a specific algorithm to generate this kind of preforms for you. Okay, and we apply the uh, traditional geometries based on their own features uh, to manage the force flows. And uh, we can discuss it you know, in detail, but uh, at the moment, just imagine when we call uh, traditional geometries, we, uh, we know, we already know that they, uh, for instance, the reaction uh, in the supports, which by the way, are related to these you know, specific points, these four you know, points that, uh, that are being uh, that, that actually includes our supporting uh, points within the structure works uh, better. I mean, uh, by changing the uh, angles between every module that you can see these two are different, the performance uh, is gonna be different. But we, we, we need to have this uh, under control, okay? We need to ask the geometries to follow our own rules. And then the second layer is these kind of force flows that you can see. The uh, having a force flow related to red, red lines uh, is from compression and the blue lines are related to tension. Uh, stretched elements are going to be there. So by having these kind of cat and compressions and tensions relatively. Okay. This is not possible that I can go further. You need to have the whole process inside the workflow and the algorithm. But imagine the physerium that you can see here, which by the way, is gonna be the second layer of our structure that holds the qualification, like environmental structure or whatever, uh, is going to follow something. And that something can actually be defined by you guys. It's manually, like uh, having a, Perform uh, under analysis of an environment, environmental procedure like solar incident, like shadowing, like anything. And we're gonna cover this kind of stuff for you. Uh, just be patient to get back to Ahmed and Behnas today at the end of the session, uh, or better say, the second section. Uh, you can check out what I'm trying to say here, you know, itch by itch. And uh, this is how I cleaned the whole structure a bit so you can find out different layers that we're going to add after each other. Like uh, the main structure is gonna be based on the geometry. The second structure, or better, the second layer of structure is based on Fizerium, but uh, it is related to those kind of defining the proof, following or followed by the function we want. 
And in that case, if we have these layers of data, we record them and going further through machine learning, we can ask Pythorium to be more, you know, uh, performative or better say, we can ask all of our data layers to be conversed through the structure we want. This is the case of applying machine learning, applying high qualified algorithm to uh, you know, develop a paradigm for us based on the design feature that we want. The same thing that I mentioned to you at the first of the lecture. Uh, functional paradigm is about defining, you know, or better say you're sorting your assets, your attributes, properties, anything that is related to a data stream towards the uh, targeting qualification. And in this workshop, we're gonna find out how. Yeah, I know there are too much of things in your mind, but it's gonna happen. Then don't worry if you find it really hesitated, but it's gonna be, you know, something you can find it easy. Okay, uh, since the workflow is the main idea, everyone enrolled in this uh, workshop, maybe you can, uh, have the pro side of Ardana after the you know presentation of Ahmed and Behnaz. Uh, what do you think, Zelda? Uh, we can have a break and then we can start with the workflow, and then I can come up with just two or three minutes or something like that to cover the pro side for you know the future reference. Yes, that would be amazing. So right now is the time for break. So we will see you after fifteen minutes. So right now uh, in GMT time, I think it's uh, for basically 4.50. So I will ask you guys to meet here by uh, five, five past five in GMT. So it will be in Iran time, it will be like uh, 8.35 maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. But in GMT time, it will be, you know, after uh, 15 minutes, which is like five past five, I believe. So see you guys after 15 minutes. Thank you.
Yes, we have. Thank you. Well, uh, let's just jump right in. So, so far you are a bit more familiar with Arduino, and uh, I need to tell you that this workshop stands on the shoulder of previous research uh, workshops and expertise of elite team member of Arduino team. Building upon this solid foundation, we have crafted a new workflow and a research uh, that aims to be the next generation of the remarkable work. Well, uh, as you know, our workshop name is Bio-Integrated uh, Modular uh, Freeform Structure Intelligent Design. We uh, driven uh, with driven inspiration from Persian geometrical pattern as known as GER and utilizing, utilizing them uh, as a primary source for modelization and uh, creating an optimized structure as a first layer. Okay, but after that, uh, in the second layer, uh, we employ natural growth pattern to develop an uh, intelligent functional paradigm. But let us uh, just, uh, let me provide you with a bit more uh, detail about our agenda and the steps uh, we will take. Our workflow uh, revolves around uh, two clusters. And the first cluster that will, uh, we will go through it uh, tomorrow, uh, create a dialogue between a Persian geometrical pattern and a structure analysis, in, in which we will uh, use uh, three different ways to um, get what uh, we, we need. For, uh, for example, we can use a carbon structure uh, to create an optimized shell, and based on and that uh, optimized shell, uh, we can uh, create a 3D geometrical pattern and uh, create an optimized uh, structure, or uh, we can use a Karam, uh, use Rhino to create a crazy surface, use Karamba to uh, analyze that surface and create a force flow. Uh, and based on that force flow, we're gonna use, um, we're gonna use Grasshopper to create a series of many, many series of, <laughs> um, that uh, can um, respond to that horse flow and um, analyze that and other um, approaches um, using different uh, patterns of gray and um, well in different approaches using basic grasshopper and uh, Grasshopper and uh, Parkit, we will create uh, gear patterns and uh, in, I'm oh, sorry, and in, uh, well, after the second cluster, uh, after that, we will dive into a second cluster. We will embark on an exciting journey of bio integrated design. As you can see, this cluster contains uh, two layers a uh, nature or physerium and many research uh, objectives. You can uh, have um, many as uh, multiple research objective. For example, uh, we can use a physerium at the same time using um, architectural um, mesh path and lines that we, we as a designer provide a physerium and in the same time using ladybug and uh, analyzing sun direct radiation and uh, give them to physerium to create an optimized uh, uh, patterns for us, and uh, we even can use a uh, force flow as a food and uh, add an environment um, data and um, our research objective and as physerium to uh, create shell for us and many other ways. But in the third cluster, uh, in the third cluster, uh, we will. Uh, delve into more realistic board of industry and exploring um, the fabrication and a more detailed modelization design inspired by nature. And uh, we also will take a, a 
one step further and learn about what and how machine learning can uh, help this project to develop even further. But in the final stage of this workshop, we will present to you with a unique opportunity to further uh, evolve and elevate the concept. Uh, in the concepts uh, we have explored, you have uh, you will be invited to choose one step uh, from each cluster and take it to the next level. This means uh, you can dive deep into any specific aspect and push it boundary uh, beyond what we have covered based on uh, your uh, own agenda. Alternatively, we can explore the possibility of creating a complete new node. Um, you can um, create a complete new node in this diagram, forging new connection from each approach we have discussed. Through this open-ended approach, we encourage you to think creatively and, and outside the box, uh, contributing new novel ideas and solutions to this mix. Your active uh, participation and innovative thinking will play a pivotal role in shaping this, the outcome of this workshop. Uh, together, let's elevate our design approach and leaving a lasting impact on the field of a uh, functional paradigm. But uh, to provide you with, with a bit more detail and uh, what we had in mind, uh, we created a series of design process diagram. Uh, we took uh, one step uh, from each cluster and uh, created a final form. And so you know what you should expect from uh, this workshop. As you can see, we uh, created a hazy surface uh, in Rhino and uh, analyze the structure in uh, Karamba, which uh, we will learn uh, tomorrow, and creating a force flow pattern. And based on that force flow pattern, we created a responsive gray um, pattern that, as you can see, uh, we analyzed it after uh, creating it, and uh, each gray uh, opens and uh, closed based on the structure and uh, the need of a structure. And uh, there are two layers together. And then it will turn to a cooking show because we're gonna prepare a meal for Pfizerium. Uh, each uh, layer of food uh, and based on a portion dedicates the importance of that food to Pfizerium. For example, as you can see, uh, first and biggest portion of the meal will be the supporting point for Pfizerium. And for the second layer, we're going to use a uh, ladybug and in environmental factors such as um, analyzing uh, sun direct radiation. And after analyzing the surface in a ladybug, we uh, cut the part that um, are more crucial for us. We need absolute a shadow in this part. Uh, so the people underneath this uh, shell, we're going to have a thermal comfort. So uh, we define food. As you can see, the portion is much smaller compared to a uh, support. So this is uh, the second layer of food and third are the least important. But uh, as you can see, uh, we added uh, the pattern and uh, design as an architect. For example, we gave uh, the Pfizerium a closed mesh that uh, and we uh, cut uh, a pass to give the physerium, uh, you had to uh, work uh, and uh, create the pattern inside this closed mesh. Uh, in a way, uh, it, it helped us to clear that path. And, and also you can see here um, that uh, we create uh, give the physerium tool line as a food. So it, it creates a um, sort of wall for us um, here as an uh, architectural approach. And uh, you see here how 
physarium worked and the final form uh, that uh, physarium uh, created for us, as you can see, uh, it, it cleared the path and created the shadowing for us, even uh, sort of uh, created uh, the wall we give it. And most importantly, uh, the near of the support form a uh, great uh, structure for us. And uh, the next step will be fabricating this and uh, creating um, the way that we can fabricate and bring in this design to a uh, real life. And uh, it's not just concept, we are grow, going through the um, fabrication process and use um, nature uh, to inspire us uh, for um, fabrication process. And uh, this is the final uh, project and the credit of this render goes to our brilliant mentor. I know he's a wizard, but uh, uh, hopefully we all can have a uh, create uh, a final project like this and our team. And if you're interested to know more about Arduino, you can uh, find us on Instagram and uh, LinkedIn and our site. So if there is any uh, question, I would be happy to answer. Thank you, Bernos. Thank you so uh, much. I think um, what we can, what can I add uh, to what you, you, you explained? And I think uh, you ended the workshop. We can <laughs> wrap it up and go to the uh, tomorrow. Yeah, thank you, Venus. Thanks. Sorry if I uh, skip some parts. Uh, hopefully, we can explain them uh, more truly tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. Yes, definitely. We are going to uh, explain them in uh, you know deeper in detail narrow down on each of them uh, but we will be happy to take some questions uh, if not uh, Ahmad uh, will you be able to um, share some uh, workflow with us and uh, workshop expectations so we can have them also and then after that we can have we can take the uh, all the questions uh, together thank you let me know if you uh, if you have my screen. Yes, yes, we have. Yeah, it's okay. By the way, you can uh, maybe close your video if, if you think that yeah, it can be affected. Thank uh, you. Do you want to, uh, I can turn it off. Yeah. Is it okay? Can you hear me clear? Yes, we can. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, uh, as Ben has explained everything, I can uh, go through the script uh, and uh, it's not something uh, to add. Uh, uh, as uh, Ben has said, uh, we have uh, three uh, main phase. Uh, uh, the, the first cluster is what uh, we have here. Uh, it's what we have in Iranian and Goreh. Uh, and it's what uh, we have in uh, uh, current analysis on the structural uh, performance of this uh, structure. And then uh, we have uh, some research object, uh, research objectives here. And then we have a uh, physerium first flow or growth uh, that based on uh, the growth, uh, growth pattern of uh, physerium. Uh, I will go uh, step by step. Uh, at the first, we have uh, you can see that we have here, uh, it's uh, a surface that we have here. And then uh, by the different curve that uh, Ben has prepared here, we, we have different curves that uh, you can see that it's based on the force flow that uh, all, all of them will, will be changed based on the force flow of uh, the uh, Yeah, these graphs and all of these uh, graphs are are a base of this graph. Uh, maybe you can add uh, your graph if you want, because all of them uh, is uh, some parametric graph that uh, Benaz will go through it uh, tomorrow. And then we have here uh, uh, the current analysis, uh, the force flow, 
yeah, this uh, is the first row that we have here based on uh, the uh, surface that we have here. And then based on this first law and the, uh, uh, how the, uh, how the, uh, the um, structure uh, uh, interact with, uh, with the first law and the Iranian uh, uh, adapt itself uh, with the, uh, with the first law, we have it here. And I, and this can give us some points based on the every region. For example, uh, I will go uh, through it. Uh, we'll go through it uh, yes, uh, tomorrow, I think. Yeah, tomorrow we'll go through it uh, deeply. But uh, here, for example, we have different region that uh, these regions that we have here it's based on different force flow, or uh, different range of force flow of the tension of uh, or the, uh, the compress that we have in that uh, in that uh, uh, or, or in that module. Yeah, it's the first part, and uh, then we have uh, this. Uh, yeah, this uh, uh, this gure, uh, I can show you, uh, show it here, I think, yeah. Yeah, this is our uh, gure that it's based on a different force flow. For example, you can see here that uh, because of the uh, tensions and the force flow that we have here, we have a more uh, closed, uh, more closed uh, gure here and more closed uh, module here. Or, uh, for example, here we have uh, less uh, tensions, and uh, the force will let us to have a more, uh, more open and in a different, uh, in a different uh, uh, how, uh, angle uh, of the gura. The next step uh, in the second cluster, we have another uh, surface that is a bit uh, upper than our uh, base surface. Uh, we have here, uh, that is uh, the part that uh, I've developed and uh, obviously I, I, I'm, I, I, have, I have more knowledge about this part. Uh, sorry for everything that I missed in the Karamba and the Gure because uh, it's, uh, it's the, base work, uh, the base work is uh, developed by Behnaz and Mahdi. And uh, here, uh, after, uh, after uh, we have uh, this, second uh, uh, surface, uh, we can uh, make, uh, how can I say, make a new uh, workspace for our physerium because uh, the physerium needs to, uh, uh, needs uh, to some foods and need to uh, work a space to uh, mm, growth, on, uh, growth on, on that workspace. For example, uh, it is an initial workspace that, that, that we have here, uh, all of it, it's something that we have. And then uh, in this part, we just choose the part that we need. As uh, Behnaz showed you uh, that some uh, boxes are, uh, are subtracted from the uh, main uh, workspace. And it's, uh, it's because of a lot of reasons that uh, we will uh, instruct you in the second cluster. And then we have some uh, attractors or some foods for uh, this physerium uh, in, uh, in this workspace. And uh, that is what we said, uh, the research uh, objective that we have it here, for example, as a sample, it's environmental uh, data flow that we have. You can see these points is uh, what's uh, based on uh, the ladybug analysis on the sun, uh, sun direction. And these points are the points that we need to uh, define something for more shadowing and uh, for um, uh, more comfort for this, uh, the occupants uh, uh, on, under this structure. And uh, another things, uh, another things and another foods uh, that uh, we gave to this uh, we gave to this uh, structure is the wall that we have here. 
dear friends. Yeah, yeah. Dear, you give it to dear friends. Yeah, to our dear friend. And uh, uh, the most important things, and uh, that is our most priority in this structure, is our base points that we have it here. That you see that uh, the proportion are uh, higher than the two uh, the two others, and that is in the different uh, priority. Yeah, we have it here. We have here the, all of all of the points that we need uh, to uh, define something for uh, sometimes uh, maybe, oh, uh, I, I forgot to say something. But sometimes uh, we have the food from here, uh, from the structure that these cladding or this physerium will, uh, will uh, work on, for example, uh, I can show you here that, the second region, we have uh, the second region. We have uh, the the, uh, the 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 domain that we have the tension and the compress, or both of them uh, in a, at the same time, and we give uh, we give these uh, points as a food to our physerium to our dear friends, and here I define some environmental. This is forceful and this uh, environment, uh, environment points. For example, I can disconnect this in this uh, yeah, as a voxel. And I can add it here as our new foods to define some uh, points to shadowing our structure, under our structure. Yeah, you can see it here that these points the uh, base points, our walls, and the points that we need to define something for physerium to uh, shadowing our structure. And then uh, we have the worker space here, and then we have uh, these foods. And now we can see the intelligence of uh, the physerium. I will reset everything. And then let me turn off this section. And now I can start it. You can see that uh, how physerium go through all the uh, all the workspace and uh, then we'll focus on the points that we have it as a food because physerium needs food uh, to feed uh, itself our dear friends and uh, these points all of uh, all of these points with uh, different proportions are uh, adapted itself with now we can uh, wait uh, for a better Outputs, I think it's enough. Now uh, you can see uh, the, the trails and uh, these uh, black lines and, and curves, we name it uh, trails and uh, we will go deeper to uh, different attributes of, uh, uh, of, uh, the, new, uh, of the physerium. And then we can uh, turn this curves to a mesh, we can enable it, yeah, and you can see the output here, and we have some walls, some organic base, and uh, it's, uh, we have, uh, we can change all of these uh, points, the voxel size, to have different, uh, to have different uh, mesh outputs. It's based on the uh, mesh, uh, it's mesh setting that we need, and you can see that we have some intersections with the base, uh, with the base and the structural pure, and uh, even we have some points that uh, it's just uh, for. Uh, 
just uh, for example, it's upper uh, upper upper of the structure, and some of them is below the uh, structure, and all of them uh, will be modularized and will uh, go to the detailed design and, or technical design. Uh, that will, uh, and that joints will be based on the nature that we will uh, have it uh, in the third cluster. Yeah, that's it, uh, my friends, uh, Selda, Mahdi, and Benaz. If I missed anything, please let me know to uh, explain it. Thank you so much. It was perfect. You covered everything. Thanks. Thank you. If, uh, if uh, you have any question, you can ask now, and uh, it's your turn to ask your questions. And I know that Mahdi and Selda are uh, answering the question in chat box, uh, but now you can unmute yourself, ask your question. Yeah, I will pass the microphone to Selda. Thank you, Selda. Maybe we can talk about uh, how uh, they need to form a groups um, from today. Okay, thank you so much, Ahmed. Sorry about that. And yeah, thank you. Uh, hopefully, you guys had some, uh, yeah, uh, you know, got familiar a bit about the process. Uh, we understand that it is a bit. Um, difficult maybe for now to understand the entire uh, workflow immediately. But uh, yeah, we will go uh, through it uh, in detail. And as you saw, maybe, uh, yeah, maybe you realize that we actually had very simple uh, steps, sometimes like very quick uh, ladybug uh, analysis. And this is just because we wanted to make it uh, simple as much as possible. But you will have opportunity to basically apply your own uh, uh, research focused in more detail, you know, in a, in a better, uh, you know, complex, uh, you know, some data uh, flow with, with your own uh, analysis. And yeah, uh, so yeah, Ahmed, do you just, want to continue to add, with the- Yeah, just, I want to add something uh, that uh, you can uh, define anything uh, here, here we have some environmental data or some walls for uh, uh, how can I uh, to uh, have a better uh, design space uh, or uh, a better design. So for some reasons, uh, the scenario that you want to apply is, uh, to this structure, but this food, it's what you will, uh, you should think that what you uh, should, uh, what your, your needs and what's your search objective to define it as a food uh, for uh, this, uh, uh, for this dear friend Pfizer um, to uh, go through, through, uh, through this. Yeah, that's it. Uh, if you have anything to ask, I can answer the question. Uh, let me yeah, guys, uh, do you have any questions? I need to read the chat quickly. Mahdi, I have no idea that how many times I use dear friends, but I want to normalize this word for you to remove all the bad memories that you have with this word. Explain that he said joke food. Oh, <laughs> about so the Mustafa is asking, does this need a really powerful uh, processor? I uh, know uh, because uh, the system, uh, the laptop that I I, I I share my screen with it, it's about I think eight years or seven years ago. It's okay. It's not so, but. Uh, you should care about it, that you should uh, 
care about these uh, part, this part that uh, the maximum number should be, uh, I think, two uh, two hundred thousands, because more than this, uh, the com your computer will say something that is not uh, suitable. Yeah, thank you. And uh, uh, so yeah, I, some... I cannot control the chat box. If uh, there is any question, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Mehdi is already uh, answering them actually here. But yeah, I would say, uh, what if we continue with the uh, with the timeline and what I think Behnaz need to uh, explain it. Is it right, Behnaz or Ahmad? You know, to, if, there, to, if I think if, uh, if there aren't any question on this section, uh, I would say to... let's let's take the questions at the end okay, because okay. We, I, we put it I believe that end. yeah yeah they, some of them can be answered uh, at the end and yeah it will be easier to manage it. Okay. So Ahmed, uh, are you going to explain the the the, the timeline and the middle board, Discord, Google Drive? I, I yeah, I would ask I will ask you to just explain a bit, uh, Ahmed or Behnas. Let me a uh, minute. Uh, let me a minute. I will open the mirror. It's okay for me. Yeah. If yeah, it's difficult so for your Bernas, I will uh, open it, but uh, you can explain on it. I have a few screen uh, from the mirror. If it's difficult, I can uh, open them. I think uh, I think uh, the mirror itself is better option. If I may, uh, I can start. Yeah, start. Uh, do you have my screen right now? Yes, we have. Yes. Okay. So we created a mirror sheet, and uh, by the way, we already have uh, sent you all the links, and you can um, join in. And if uh, you um, have a difficulty or anything please reach down to us and if you are iranian please use vpn i'm so sorry but um he <laughs> added the link to a discord also a side note make sure you are uh, joined in discord group as well well uh, in miro we started with uh, rules and uh, recommendations i know it's a bit too long but please take your time and skim through it and uh, after that, uh, we uh, created a legend for you. Um, uh, created legend for you. Uh, please pay attention, extra attention to these color codes because we used uh, these color codes uh, to our presentations, algorithms everywhere to make it easier for you to track uh, which cluster we are in and which. Uh, you know uh, which steps we're on in so um, you can find the legend here and this is our timeline well uh, we already had the fun day and we already had introduction tomorrow we will start with first cluster i will be your instructor tomorrow and we will delve into a history of a uh, and how make it and um using karma to structure analyzes and create a dialogue between these two and create our uh, final structure. And uh, in 26th of July, we will delve into a, a second cluster and uh, my brilliant colleagues, Ahmed and Nidia uh, Selda will be explaining to you about a uh, Pfizerium and the fundamental Pfizerium and uh, algorithm and everything. 
And in the third cluster, uh, as we told you, uh, we will dive into a, a fabrication process using nature and all of that. And in the further party, we will uh, have a series of a surprise lecture for you. Uh, we will uh, talk about machine learning and uh, what the next step is going to be. And we will um, talk and uh, tell you about uh, announcement and uh, assignment and uh, what um, you should do we will provide you with a uh, indesign sheet don't worry if you don't know in design i will be here to walk you through all that and um, don't uh, think stressed out about that part we, but we need to uh, create a, a final work into indesign sheet and a final presentation with a surprise jury will be tba and but the part that we created for you. As you can see, uh, we recommend you create a group uh, with um, containing three to five members. Uh, please uh, add your uh, team members uh, here. After that, uh, if you can, please uh, fill this part. Uh, tell us where are you from um, and how long have you been using Gino and all that. Um, other question this way uh, it help us to create a more balanced group uh, by the way we are not uh, making group uh, you are the one who chooses uh, which group uh, should you join but uh, creating this sheet will help you to uh, choose which group you should uh, join and this is a checklist of each step of uh, the cluster we provided you. So um, underneath each um, posted note, there is a small sticker. And after you finish that part, please uh, turn uh, change it to a done. And uh, as we explain, um, it's your turn to uh, either um, find a new, um, define a new step or uh, take um, one existence uh, step and uh, take it further and uh, this brainstorming part is dedicated to you and your team member feel free to do whatever you want here um and, and it helps a lot to brainstorm in mirror with uh, other groups uh, it uh, everyone it can see it live so uh, each a change you create here will be available to your team members and quite uh, amusing and a final result will be a uh, post here and we cannot wait to see your work here please uh, if anyone has any question i will be happy to answer then as i can share the mural if uh, if there are any updated uh, any, any update mind. there we can see it there I will up share my screen. Thanks a million. Yes, guys, do you have my screen? Yes, yes. Okay, I turn off my video. And if you have... Uh... If you have anything to... Yeah, these parts that you can add your team members and uh, the information and uh, we can know you better. Uh, it's some simple question, where are you from? How long uh, you have been using Rhino? Uh, for how long have you been using programming? And there is no difference about visual or textual. Uh, what is your research interest and expertise? Uh, it's help you so, uh, for example, it helps you that uh, make a balanced team. That uh, maybe some uh, some um, some participants' uh, uh, expertise or research interests are based on, for example, bio design. They can uh, take the control of this uh, section. And what is your affiliation? Is it's just more uh, uh, know uh, to better know you, all of you. And yeah, that's it. That uh, you can add it here. The, just uh, please make the group today or uh, end of tomorrow because you can you should uh, start your uh, uh, start your design start your scenario from tomorrow after the Benaz uh, uh, Benaz uh, 
lecture and yeah if there's any question you can ask us thank you ahmed and behnas yeah uh, i can see some questions interesting questions in chat which uh Mehdi is already answering but uh mostly it's about uh, the recording which uh, right now we are recording the sessions uh, and we are hoping to find a way to communicate uh, yeah, this with, you know, online and uh, we will be anyway, we, we are um, uh, like, you know, we are happy to share uh, all the resources and recording. And yeah, we can discuss this with uh, Digital Futures to see how we can uh, communicate uh, this with you. And there are some questions about, um, the, the the rhino and grasshopper uh level it, it's really about uh, yourself it's like uh you know in workshops there are different uh level of proficiency and that's completely fine it's actually uh it can be a positive point because we are all here to learn together and that's why i believe if you can uh go through the middle board and see how you can balance this in your team according to your uh, education level uh, according to your skills maybe someone is not uh, familiar that much with rhino or grasshopper but uh, they are familiar with uh, graphical design that is also a part of the project and then after all of this again you have time after workshop after the last day of workshop a couple of days you will have to uh, basically go through the, all the uh, ingredients uh, all the days and then uh, check how you can uh, basically uh, what to say, uh, follow them and uh, yeah, complete your final project. So you will have a plenty of time also uh, before your final presentation. But don't worry about that. We will be there uh, with you and um, Gradually, we will uh, complete this workflow together. Uh, then, um, if you guys, if you have a question, you also can just unmute yourself and uh, ask your questions. Don't worry about that also. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you something. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, uh, all the resources and algorithms and everything will be shared with you on a uh, google drive and the link of google drive will be given to you uh, be chosen um, and chosen the google drive because it's more permanent and also it's safer um, in, in environment uh, for sharing uh, sharing uh, big data and all that and uh, you can use the off topic uh, channels on a uh, discord to discuss and um, also you can use a um, insta channel to uh, find a better you know uh, teammate and uh, we encourage you to share your social media linkedin instagram uh, twitter whatever you want in there so and uh, introduce introduce yourself in there so uh, other can know you and your work even if you want you can um, share the link of your portfolio whatever you are uh, comfortable with it and uh, please don't he hesitate to use a uh, off topic ch and channel on a uh, discord to talk and uh, discuss about uh, finding a new you know a team member or whatever uh, i'm sorry if i talk too much if there is still any question i will be happy to answer thank you so mustafa is actually asking about uh this discord uh He's asking, uh, can we add a few voice channels in the Discord? I'm not sure if it is possible. Can you see her his uh, uh, chat? I will check, but usually it get too crowded and noisy for some people with lots of notification and all that. I usually, I recommend you use the off-topic channel or, or general channel to discuss together. This way, uh, yeah, uh, this way, in, you you will leave the permanent uh, text everyone else that are not present at that time can uh, read it also because this is a global workshop and uh, maybe 
at the time you're uh, online and um, using voice channel, other people might not be able to answer or be part of that communication. Uh, I will recommend you to use a uh, off-topic channel, but I will uh, check if I can, I will add another uh, voice channel for sure. I uh, just, I have a suggestion. Uh, I know that uh, today the host and the control of this a session is with Zelda, but if you want to discuss uh, with each other uh, without uh, without any limitation, we can add some extra time after this session, and you can discuss to each other uh, if anyone uh, think that uh, you uh, if uh, make some connection and discuss about your strength or your skills to make your best uh, team uh, team uh, team member. I think we can some add some extra time after this session for you. Yes, sure. Uh, to be honest, anything is uh, fine. Just uh, you know, feel free to uh, communicate with each other. Uh, one good thing about the middle chart, middle uh, board, is that you can see uh, different people's um, affiliation and uh, affiliation and also you know their skill set their interest and you can have a good understanding and then if you see that okay some groups are unbalanced or you know um, they they need some uh, change then again you can just move uh, you know your, uh, your name and all the details to the another uh, team just yeah feel free to communicate with each other and uh, uh, yeah, whatever happens it, it's like uh, you know the, the journey that we will go all together so yeah, uh, just don't make, uh, take it so much seriously. Just uh, have fun and uh, yeah, enjoy the learning. Okay, so now we have uh, around half an hour. I will ask Mehdi uh, to continue his uh, lecture a bit more. And then again, we can have, uh, you know, we can take, a, a, yeah, a few more questions at the end of the workshop. So yeah, by that time, maybe uh, some questions also, yeah, will be there. Sorry, I had in your voices. <clears throat> no worries, my thing. Okay. Because we have half an hour and uh, we can have a few, yeah, a few minutes before um, ending the session to have more questions. But everyone may, may so we have no idea about each other who are Yeah, but everyone who, know, um, now knows that Mehrzad is very active. It's very interesting actually. I uh, I can say I never had a, a direct maybe communication with Mehrzad, but the interesting thing is that Believe me, with no exaggeration, all the workshops that I was <laughs> participating in, you all know, the lectures, uh, all the just, workshops, whatever online is there. Jokes about it. Mersat was the first time, first person there. <laughs> Always seeing Mersat in all the workshops and, and this is, uh, online this lectures. This is gonna be his last one. Amazing. Workshop. You know why? Because I dug out a pitfall for him today and the last session. Everyone will. You know, follow him to be in his group. Uh, he's gonna uh, get a lot of messages, and he's gonna hate me. <laughs> <laughs> no, guys, just uh, take it really simple. You know, maybe like uh, you don't need to know everything about each other. Just uh, pick someone and start the whole journey. That's just uh, really see it as a simple way uh or maybe you can ask uh each other on discord or check out the instagram profiles that everybody uh has already shared there but uh, uh from our own side uh every group would follow the instruction on already written works and files uh, and you're gonna find it easy to follow yeah, and also, you know, by checking the LinkedIn and Instagram, I found many talented people right now We are with us. Uh, yeah, I don't want to go through all of them one by one. I Yeah, but I know that you, we will have amazing works at the end of this workshop. So, yeah. Um, 
I would say, Mehdi, do you want to continue with your uh, lecture through the uh, some projects? Yeah, I, I just don't want to make it a headache uh, because the workflow is much more important. And thank you guys for presenting the whole thing. And there's nothing left but sharing the files, please, uh, because so many people ask me on, on the chat box. Um, and uh, they can go through it as if, you know, uh, checking out how they are distributed in Grasshopper, Rhino, or whatever. Uh, and from the next session, we're going to have you, or better say, have everyone to go through a hands-on journey, like a method or something that you can follow every instructive way. And uh, I just need five to seven minutes uh, for reviewing our, you know, pro side a little bit for, you know, further reference. Yes, sure. And Mayor said, I would recommend you not to go for Ahmed's comments. He's, uh, <laughs> he's like a daredevil, just for, do not go that road. Okay, shall I uh, share my screen? Yes, sure, thank you. All right. And sorry me for making these bunch of jokes. Yeah, I, I promise not to go further. That is the best I can do. All right. Uh, screen number two. You should have my screen now. Yes, we have. Okay, great. And I need to drop this. Okay, I think it's now working. All right, guys, uh, this is uh, just considered as a reference to our pro site. Uh, and the reason I'm presenting this uh, is the main claim or a statement I made before starting the whole workflow and talking today uh to um, check with you this team has the experience of making everything they speak make everything they talk in real world applications and uh we're gonna have that a specific part with your workflows with having Pycerium, the different layers of data everything but just see uh this side of our learning we always uh, try to develop something that can be used out there. And this is the difference between us and, you know, uh, other approaches because uh, we keep ourselves balanced between ind industrial works and research based projects. And this leaves us uh, the, uh, you know, um, presentation of something that is useful. Uh, so, uh, the first project I'm going to represent uh, related to uh, the tennis court at Iran Mall. It's built in Tehran. We were uh, at the position of algorithmic shop drawing, which, by the way, uh, can possibly be part of your workflow when it comes to designing your modules. And we're going to talk about it, I think, on the third day. Uh, but think about the complexity we're talking about. Uh, yeah, it's not comparable to uh, how Fisarium gives us an organic shape, but uh, I mean, we're gonna cover some of the attributes that we can actually, or better to say, we should actually consider when it comes to complex structures. So you're gonna find yourself an instructional workflow that give you uh, the idea of how to consider those parameters related to, for instance, real world applications. I mean, uh, checking out the sizes, the material we're going to use, and of course, applying different load cases when it comes to use current maturity as the module for structural analysis, or even talking about the environmental aspects that Behnaz was representing. Uh, all of them are connected to what building industry needs, okay? So not just a fancy form or complex uh, of an object inside monitor. Uh, 
uh, we are trying to represent some of those aspects, not particularly 100% related to building industry, but you're going to find yourselves, uh, you know, understanding the whole thing, okay? So, uh, I'm going to just, just tell, like, the remote control of air conditioning. I'm going to get freeze out there. All right. Uh, this is the project we uh, were talking about. You can see the workflow uh, that represents how we manage the data through different elements. And imagine that element, uh, regardless of what you can actually see here in our project, I'm talking about this workshop, uh, could possibly be uh, filtered with data streams. And um, every element we we're going to design have those functions. Uh, the next one is related to Caddis Fly, which is a plugin we developed exclusively for managing data through uh, single layer and double layer freeform structures. And this project has been built in Tehran also. Uh, our position was also uh, the design, uh, let us say design consultant, like uh, form finding procedures and uh, optimizing the whole thing, like uh, the paneling size and everything was on site. And you can see the finish, finish job. Uh, and that, that's, this is how Caddis for Life works. It connects different nodes and links. You remember the project I represented about having the analysis on every node based on the force flows. Uh, this is the simple one for the industry. And I, I, I totally meant it. You know, every experience we got through the research project, we uh, try to represent this in, uh, you know, solving a real problem. And uh, this diagram is highly important uh, because it shows some of the attributes you are going to follow through the hands-on project you're going to design, like the free-form structure you're going to have. Every free-form structure has different modules from design, analysis, and fabrication. The fabrication part is the one that carries for like take care of. We're not gonna use it, but uh, this is, you know, uh, to conceptualize the whole thing. So uh, when you design something, you need to think about the fabrication system and technique. Uh, for instance, the structural location is important, the geometry and paneling is important, and the element torsion angles, everything is important. Like uh, when it comes to you know defining an element through the uh, like a spatial uh, a structure, and we talk about them, and of course form finding issues. If by any chance any one of you guys uh, had experiences in form finding, you can help other teams, and we really recommend every team has someone like uh, you know who knows about uh, how we can find the perfect form. Uh, and if you don't, if you have no idea about that, we can help you with it. Don't worry. Uh, okay. Uh, let me just go through this slide, which represents the you know components on Candice Fly. Uh, Candice Fly through Gasopper. You, you cannot find it on Food for Rhino, as I mentioned earlier, maybe yesterday. And the GH time is related to check out how this works. All right, let me just make this on render mode. So you can feel uh, how everything is related to these kind of structures. Uh, maybe you have seen some of them uh, in you know, pretty amazing, beautiful structures out there, but uh, the, this is related to the detail. And Canis for I, develops the nodes and the profiles for us. So think about it the uh, into the organic shape, okay? Uh, once we started to talk about your module, which is related to uh, a single cell of your freeform structures, we're, we are going to ask you to think about how it can actually be applied in real world when it comes to making this as a prototype or as a pavillon or something. This is the last section of our workshop. We're going to talk about those industrial related attributes with you, but from one group to another, 
we're going to share so many you know different experiences that is i expect uh that in that part we can learn from each other a lot because there are so many different techniques so many different you know uh, fabrication systems that we can align our design uh, in each group to those and in each group we can have different you know experiences experiencing package so i really expect that that will happen but uh, we're going to help you with that so back in uh, the, this one yeah yeah, I'm going to run Caddy Spotify so you can find out how it works. This is not related to the workshop, but uh, you can feel when it comes to something real, how we as architects can actually take care of. I just have every component here and under the DF023, uh, which by the way shouldn't be here, yeah. And it starts to develop those nodes automatically. Now think of it if you are going to recommend the whole world building the street to a new novel research-based uh workflow uh th this could be something reliable it's based on uh how it tracks the data through the preform or better say the freedom of form uh and uh the paneling it starts to develop those nodes for us and of course we can have the links as well so uh this is just a showcase to give you the idea okay if if i come up with something from managing data flows like force flows environmental analysis anything related to the integrated procedure i have uh you can see the actual you know uh, real world sample sample or let's say the prototype for the next part and in this workshop we're gonna work on that this is you know uh something maybe a little bit ambitious but we eventually want to do that so i'm gonna cut this to the chase these guys are gonna be eliminated so you know like guidelines and we're not gonna work with them so it's finished and now I simply can have everything sorted out uh, and it also carried at the DF123, uh, 023. So if I select the nodes and put them here, and select the profile sections, Put them here yeah i can eventually have the whole structure totally ready for build oh maybe i i, I should i should have seen this kind of stuff eliminated Okay, just a sec. All right. Okay, let's see what happened. I should have the the notes sorted out here every one of them and they are customized different from each other and I should have also the profiles on my structure like this and of course on ground with different data everything is sorted out uh, this is just a simple showcase related to your workshop and what you're going to experience and uh, maybe wh wh why did I you know present that maybe in near future after the workshop 
with those talents we got through the final presentation there is no assignment by the way uh we can lead this experience with you guys or with the selected ones or anyone who is interested by the way it's not a competition uh to this state this level of you know uh kind of stuff like having a free form structure that can actually get uh different data flows whatever it is but it is relied on uh, a specific system and technique of fabrication this is the next step maybe the next year on our workshop i, I have no idea but uh, it, it's a, it's an open hatch we can think about it so i did uh, present this one here because it's related to one of our research projects and now we are representing it to industry so maybe in near future we can have the same experience with the outcome of this workshop I'm done, Selda. Uh, I hope everyone uh, found this interesting. The, the the scenario that we have in our in our minds, uh, because it's from A to Z, from design, research, and everything to. Uh, let me. Yes, thank uh, you. you. There is a question uh, from I think Amirzad that uh, uh, said that can you explain algorithm chop drawing. Uh, sounds interesting and uh, ask about the algorithmic shop drawings a little bit more. You were talking to me? Yeah. Okay, which one? You meant this, this here, right? Is that right? You have my screen, right? No, we don't have okay, your screen. Let me share it again. You sure should have it by now. Yes, we have it. Okay, great. If uh, did you mean it? The UML project? Yes, my son says that this project. Let me see that which I Okay, great. So the problem on this project uh, was related to the main structure, like these guys. Uh, and we had to develop something, which you can see here, uh, to get the columns, the main structure of the building, and roll out every other uh, details uh, for us so we can build them you know, each by each, you know, every little part. So imagine if, if the algorithm reads these lines, let me just zoom in a little bit. It gets the main column here and the other one from this span. And it develops the, the belts for us, which by the way, has different uh, you know, components. It's not just a simple belt. Uh, you can see on these images. The, the the cross section is you know not a standard shape uh, and it has uh, a complicated sort of components all together and by this algorithm we uh, found ourselves through the uh, the problem by giving it the the columns and getting out the unrolled version of every little part that was the only case for shop drawing automatic shop drawing of this one and maybe here you can find some of those details i'm talking about and check these out What do you mean by normal details? No, what, what you see was produced by the algorithm exactly. Oh, with every little, uh, no, maybe, I, maybe I, I can show you something. With the perforations, with these kind of, you know, stuff like the uh, cutting uh, edges, every little part was inside the algorithm, totally controlled.
Yes, thank you, Mehdi. I can see uh, already uh, people are in middle to make groups. Uh, yeah, that, that's totally fine. And uh, yeah, thank you for your participation, but uh, don't worry at all. You have plenty of time to uh, know each other and um, create the teams. So yeah, uh, we have a couple of minutes to ask, to take um, yeah, some questions maybe about uh, Mehdi's lecture, about uh, the workflow. Yeah, it's very interesting to see <laughs> on Miro how people are moving uh, really? and editing <laughs> online. Yeah, I'm sorry, may I add this? Yes, sure. Side note, uh, I add the uh, voice channel to this collection. Yeah, that's fine. I think we lost uh, your voice. Oh yeah, okay, you muted yourself. Sorry, I have a VPN on it's a poor connection, sorry. I will fix it right now. No worries. So you want to share a screen? Don't blame the VPN, blame the government. Eventually they're gonna take them down. Oh, okay. I, uh, what's the next level, Silda? Uh, I think if uh, there is any question about the workflow, uh, about uh, uh, Mahdi's presentation, uh, you can ask. Yes. You can ask in the chat or on or raise your hand to unmute your and uh, unmute yourself to ask your question. Uh, I will be happy if you see that. Raise your hand to ask a question. Because also, guys, if we uh, missed any questions, I will ask you to write it again, sorry, or reply on it. Um, because, yeah, it was quite complex kind of uh, question and answering was there in the chat. So maybe I, it, it, yeah, it is possible that I missed any. And we, we would be very happy to see your faces also. But yeah, never mind. Yeah, Hi, <laughs> Victor. So, sorry, uh, I was in a top meeting, like, <laughs> uh, so I finished the call like one hour ago, so I wasn't able to join to any of the groups. <laughs> Is there any chance to assign me to any of the groups? I'm still out of home and not have the, my computer and this call. <laughs> no worries sorry. at all. Uh, so you will have a plenty of time to figure out how to join the group. So you just go whenever you can, just go through the middle board and check uh, different people, how they are, uh, how they fill the form. And uh, yeah, you can just join whenever you want. So the, the, the idea is that you will be mostly listening during these five days, mostly. But you also have time to meet with your group, to, to discuss with your group uh, during these five days, you know, after workshop, before workshop, and then you will have a plenty of days. Basically, I would, I yeah, maybe yeah, at least uh, two three days if you like, to communicate with each other, to uh, to have your entire workflow properly, and then uh, you will be uh, presenting your work uh, for the in the jury uh, jury uh, session. So don't worry about that. Uh, you have you have time still. Uh, it's just, you know, uh, I, I would say after finishing this session, uh, let's go and check the mirror uh, properly. And then, yeah, uh, no worries at all. Yeah, we can definitely join. 
Thank you. Uh, also, also, I have other. Oh, sorry, I just hope someone. Yes. Uh, also, I have like other question. Um, I during your presentation, you mentioned that we are going to work with nuclei, right? And it's going to be like uh, looking for feed for the agents, right? And my question is, is there any chance or possibility to swap this method for, for example, reinfor re reinforcement learning and Q agents uh, as a part of machine learning model? Uh, I had some difficulty to uh, listening to her. Uh, Ahmed, did oh, you okay. realize? Uh, what let, let me just sorry. let me just uh, answer this one. About the yeah, Victor, uh, glad to meet you again, by the way. And uh, yeah, you're right about that, but uh, we cannot cover during this workshop, but we developed this workflow so we can have something to apply, uh, you know, even deep learning modules after it. So if you get, get in touch, uh, you know, we can uh, kind of like, uh, you know, check it uh, if, the recording of the data can be more uh, possibly be you know reliable because nuclei is really you know slow, and we're trying to develop something uh, from our own side to apply Pfizerian movement throughout the freeform structure. If we can have that, yeah, reinforcement learning and deep learning procedures also can be applied. But this is gonna be you know after the workshop. However, the workflow is uh, being developed. So we can have this after these experiences together. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for the answer. <laughs> and nice to see you again. <laughs> yeah, sure. Thank you. Nice you to see you again. Guys, any other questions? We have five minutes to finish this session. But just feel free to uh, yeah, to, uh, to ask any question in Discord or just reach out to us. Uh, via email. Yeah, you know, anytime uh, we're gonna cover you. Don't worry, Behnaz never sleeps. <laughs> anytime you have any question, I'm at your service. <laughs> Wherever you, you are. 24 7, I'm at your service. Thank you. Yeah. It's really amazing how Zainas uh, is active like an and helpful, side. really helpful. Oh, I can see, oh, yeah, many people in Miro. And yeah, they already made the groups. So, um, so here it's just four groups, uh, but just feel free to copy. Uh, I think, yeah, you should copy paste uh, one template if you need more templates to add your own um, names. I can do that by the end of today. I will add a few, several few uh, groups to the mirror just to make sure everyone have a new simple, you know, a clean one to add their name. So don't worry if you, uh, if the groups are full, Either uh, feel free to add a new one uh, or wait, I will add uh, as soon as possible. Yes, sure. Thank you so much. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Many thanks for all of us, uh, all of you, sorry, <laughs> to be here, especially Mehdi, Ahmed and Behnaz and Digital Futures for this opportunity. I, I really appreciate your participation and your uh, communication that you had for your all questions and yeah communication thank you so much and see you tomorrow again this time thank you bye bye uh yes thank you Selda. thank you all of you guys to being here just uh if you want uh, to have discussion with your teammates or have a free discussion about making group uh we can uh, uh put the uh group uh, put the zoom session uh uh, open until you until you uh, ended uh, this session. If you want, uh, I can uh, resume this session. If you want.
please uh, tell me in the, in the chat if you want. I, if you want, we can resume this session. Fine, thank you. We have some bye byes. I think we do not need for today. Thank you, guys. Bye bye.